unclear which Lightroom tool to use to remove unwanted items in your photos. Not sure the difference between the healing and the cloning tool. If that's the case, then just watch this video to get all the answers you need. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and I help beginning and intermediate photographers like you how to improve your photos right from capture in camera all the way through to the end of the photo editing process. So without further ado, let's dig in and look at the Lightroom cloning and healing tool. I'm going to use this simple image of a colorful wall that I downloaded from the Unsplash stock website to demonstrate the cloning and healing tool. To activate the tool, you can use the toolbar here and just press the little band-aid, or you can go up to the toolbar and choose spot removal, or finally you can use the keyboard shortcut Q. If you would like a free Lightroom keyboard shortcut PDF that you could print out and have handy on your desktop, Use the link in the description below to sign up and download it. Once the spot removal tool is open, you'll see that there are two choices at the top where it says brush type, cloning and healing. I'm going to start with cloning first and I'm going to change the opacity to 100% so it's not see-through in any way and I'm going to change the feather to zero because then you can really see the hard edge of the brush. When you put the brush over the image, you'll see the circle. I'm just going to make it even bigger. I'm using another keyboard shortcut, and that's the square bracket key to make my brush bigger. Once you click on it, it will set that area that you've clicked on as the target area, as in that's the one that you want to fill with something else. It's also set the source area. So I'm going to separate these just so that you can see in a little more detail. So it's sampling from this area on the lower left, and there's a tiny arrow that points up, and you can see that it's putting it into this area on the upper right. So it's literally copy and pasting the same pixels from one area to another. If we go back here to alter some of the settings on the tool, I'm gonna to drag the feather amount up to a larger number. So what that does is it softens the edge. So you can still see that it's taking from the same area and copy and pasting into the same area, but now the edge is just a bit faded out. So no matter where I put this one here, which is the source, it's going to copy those pixels up into this upper area. Lowering the opacity just makes it a bit more see-through. So opacity zero, you don't see at all, and opacity 100, its exact copy and paste. Before we move on to see how to use this tool in a real example, let's see how it differs from the healing tool. If I change the selection from cloning to healing, now what it's trying to do is it's still sourcing the pixels from the bottom area up into this top area, but now it's trying to blend them with the surrounding pixels. So it's not an exact copy and paste, it's more of a try and blend this in. The same settings apply if we feather or lower the opacity. So one more time, cloning is an exact copy and paste. Healing is a copy and paste with a twist of trying to blend it in to the other pixels in the target area. Now let's take a look at how you would use these tools to remove or soften something in your image. This is another image that I got from the stock website, and I'm going to try and use the tools to remove this line in the background. So it's like a split in the wooden background. But let's say I don't like it and I want to minimize it or remove that line. So we open the spot healing tool. I'm going to set the feather fairly high this time, and you can see when I change the feather, what it's doing is it's blending the part where I'm copying and pasting with the outer edges a little bit more. Okay, so the higher the feather, the more area of blending. I'm going to start with exact cloning in a smaller brush. I don't need one that's so big. So I'm trying to set the brush just larger than the area that I want to get rid of. So the inner part or the inner circle is just bigger than the black area I want to erase or remove. 
So if I click and make draw a line, which is another option you can do with this tool, you're not limited to just circles, it's going to pick a source area for me. But I can easily readjust it by dragging this up here or down here. Now cloning hasn't done a horrible job in this case, but you can see where it's happening and it's not a perfect blend. So I could lower the opacity or a better option here is to use healing because then it's going to try and blend the area from where I'm targeting into the source area a little bit better. Another option is when you are going over an area like this where there's the steam, for example, it chose the source area and I can move it around and try and get it to blend a little better. Okay, see that's blending the steam in nicely. But if I use cloning, it's going to give me a perfect copy and it's not going to blend as well. So you can already start to see the applications of when you'd want to use healing as opposed to cloning. Let's take a look at a portrait. In this image, I'm going to use the spot removal tool to lighten the circles under her eyes. Always make sure that you zoom in to at least 50% when you're doing this kind of editing so that you have more precise application of the tool. To soften the lines under her eyes, I don't want to remove them completely. I'm going to get a small brush, again, just slightly bigger than the area I want to remove or soften, paint a little arc or circle, and then reposition the target area because Lightroom has gotten it horribly wrong, which it often does. But you can see what's happening when I have this set to 100% opacity, Lightroom's trying to remove that whole thing and it's making a bit of a blurry mess. But by lowering the opacity to about 30%, let's see what it's doing. When I toggle this tool off, look at that circle under her eye, just become lightened or softened. Then I can do the same under this eye, reposition the source area, and you'll notice that Lightroom remembered the last settings that I used on this tool. So it is now healed at 30% opacity on this one as well. You can try cloning in a case like this, but often you end up with mismatched colors because it's not attempting to blend them as well. So healing at a lowered opacity is a great option for just lightening things like this. When we look at the whole image, there's this bright area over here that's a river or a waterfall. We can use the same technique. So once again, I've got my brush about the size or slightly larger than the area I want to affect. And it's chosen a good source area this time. So I'm just trying to line up this uh, horizontal line of the water. And again, the 30% opacity has done a really great job. If I want to remove it completely, going up to 100%, somewhere in here actually does a great job, about 50%. Now I can do the bottom area. So remember that you can paint with this tool as well. You're not limited to just a circle. And you can see that by increasing the opacity just slightly, it's darkening that area and minimizing the brightness and taking away from the subject without removing it completely. One final pass across the middle, one more time. You can see the source area up here, it just needs adjusting and a little bit more opacity. Once again, we could try the cloning tool, okay, but it doesn't do a great job blending. The healing tool does a better job in this case. So there's a time and a place for cloning and healing. Most of the time I use the healing tool and I often lower the opacity so that I'm just softening as opposed to fully removing. If I toggle this tool off, you can see that the circles under her eyes have been lightened and the white area or bright area in the background has been darkened to minimize it. I hope that gives you a better idea of how to use the spot removal tool in Lightroom when to use cloning, when to use healing, when to feather it, and when to lower the opacity to just soften the effect. If you want more Lightroom tips and tutorials, click on the video here now. For the ultimate Lightroom education, you might want to check out my Lightroom course as well. 
There's a link to that in the description area below and on the screen now. Take care, happy editing.